owners. Welcome to another edition of Sticks and Stones. I am your host, Brent Elrod, coming to you from the blazing confines of the patio here at the No Shoes Bar and Grill, deep in the heart of a hot Republic of Texas. I have a great pairing lined up for you today. I am pairing the AJ Fernandez New World Navigante with Glendronic 12 year old scotch. I think it's going to be a great matchup, so let's dive in, pop the cork, cut the stick, and get to toasting. Now, the AJ Fernandez New World Navigante came about after Ishmael Fernandez, after 17 years with Placencia Cigars, decided to collaborate with his son, AJ Fernandez, on a line of cigars. And this is the first one. This is a Robusto, five and a half by 55 on the ring gauge. The filler is Nicaraguan Condeje, Omentepe, and Finca Soledad tobaccos. The binder is Nicaraguan Jalapa, and it is cloaked in a beautiful Nicaraguan Oscuro leaf. Now, visually, this is a beautiful, beautiful dark and oily brown. Uh, it has tight, invisible seams, minimal veining, and quite a bit of tooth. Now, on the nose, it's got a fairly simple uh, profile. Um, I pick up earth, quite a bit of spice and a soft, subtle, leathery aroma. It's a wonderful smelling cigar. Let's go ahead and get our C-Car V-Cutter. Give this stick a cut. And test out the cold draw. Now on the cold draw, I get uh, dark chocolate, earth, a little bit of coffee, and um, kind of a, a liquor spirits sort of undertone to it. I won't say alcohol because I don't want people to think about like rubbing alcohol. This, this is more like a, a bourbon or a scotch or something like that, uh, a very fine spirit. This is a great cigar. Now, a lot of people may not have heard of Glendronk. Uh, I have been seeing it appear more and more in my newsfeed on Instagram, so I decided I needed to give it a try. Uh, it's still rather unknown, at least from my perspective, in, uh, in the Scotch world, but uh, it's probably not going to stay that way. So if you want to get in before the price skyrockets, you probably want to try and do it now. Let's go ahead and pop the cork. Mm, love that sound. Now, that is a beautiful, beautiful scotch. It is a dark caramel with tinges of red in it. It's got wonderful legs. It is really clinging to the glass well. Uh, this, is, this is just a wonderful spirit. I'm surprised that it is not skyrocketed yet. Now on the nose, I get uh, a sweet vermouth, dark fruit, cocoa, and honey. Okay, here we go. I was so excited uh, to, to try this first sip, and it does not disappoint. Um, I'm picking up uh, notes of cherry, 
like raspberries or strawberries, uh, a little bit of citrus. Some notes of leather and uh, oak and like a, a sweet uh, pipe tobacco. This, is, uh, this has got a wonderful, wonderful palette to it. I think it's going to pair very well with the New World Navigante. So let's go ahead and get this stick toasted up. That is a really good stick. Um, on the light, I'm picking up uh, coffee, kind of a buttered toast, and uh, just a little bit of spice. It's not overly spicy. It's got pretty good smoke output. Once I hit it again, uh, the volume of smoke really increased. That is a really great stick. Now let's try them together. Those are going together pretty well. Uh, the uh, kind of the fruitiness of the Glendronk uh, with the cherries, raspberries, strawberries kind of thing. Uh, a little citrus is mixing uh, very well with the, uh, the the coffee and the toast and the spice. And then you, you have on the cold draw a little bit of chocolate. Um, I think these are going together pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and burn this down to the halfway mark. And then I will come back and give you an update. My political commentary today... Uh, maybe a little outside the realm. It's really talking about somebody that's kind of not in politics right now. Before you all jump on the wagon of, oh, he's going to talk about Trump. No, actually I'm not. Uh, I recently watched a video that Tulsi Gabbard put out uh, where she was doing the Murph challenge. And uh, for those of you that uh, aren't in the military, uh, Michael Murphy is one of the uh, subjects of the movie Lone Survivor. Uh, he uh, perishes uh, along with most of his team. And uh, the Murph challenge is a physical challenge of a mile run, and I'm, I'm just kind of paraphrasing this. I don't have the exact figures. It's a mile run, like 100 pull-ups, uh, 200 push-ups, 300 uh, sit-ups, and then another mile run. And she was doing this challenge uh, on Memorial Day and uh, to really kind of get her, her mindset into thinking about the, the sacrifices of the military and, and the those that didn't make it home, uh, as most of you may know, uh, she is a veteran herself. And uh, it really got me thinking about her and her political career. Uh, you know, she was a representative from the state of Hawaii and ran for president. And uh, she was in the bottom end of the pack in the primaries, and she was complaining mightily about the rules and uh, her not being able to be on stage with uh, the front runners 
and since uh, she has been basically blackballed by the Democratic Party uh, because she dared to speak out against the establishment. Um, and, and honestly, while I don't agree with all of her politics, uh, she is somebody that having watched a lot of her videos and listened to a lot of what she said, she's got a very level head on her shoulders. And I, I really hope that she can get swung around to more of the libertarian point of view and, and get away from the two-party politics of Democrat and Republican, because quite honestly, most people don't fall into those two categories anyway. They've just told that they have to. So that's what they do. And they follow along. Um, I think if she would really analyze uh, the back story of some of her positions, she might find out that having been an officer in the military and uh, having the level head that she does, she might think a little differently than she really has been told she has to think by the Democratic Party. Uh, and might end up making an excellent independent candidate in the, maybe the Libertarian Party for president. But it would take some work because some of her positions are, uh, if they still stand, are a little too far left for us Libertarians. Uh, but I voted Democrat, I voted Republican, and I ended up settling in the Libertarian Party because I found I didn't fit into those two molds. I love freedom. I love liberty. I'm, I'm more socially liberal. I know the whole thing about abortion right now is a big deal. Abortion's not my issue. If you've got all the information and that's what you choose to do, that's your business and not mine. And I hope you can live with the consequences of your choice because you have to live with those for the rest of your life. But that's, that's for you to decide, not for me. Uh, but when it comes to you know, welfare, food stamps, the nanny state, I'm very much physically conservative. Maybe even more than some conservatives. I believe there's way too much government. But check out Tulsi Gabbard. Pretty much the only place you can find her anymore is on Rumble uh, because she's pretty much been blackballed from everywhere else. So she might make uh, an interesting political figure in the future if she has the right guidance. Maybe from somebody like me. I mean, really, honestly. What if Gabby ran for president and won? Wouldn't you rather have her on your TV screen rather than some 70-something-year-old white dude? <laughs> hey, stoners. I am back. We are almost down to the band. <laughs> and the glass is already empty. This was a wonderful pairing. And I didn't think it was going to be that great. I mean, I thought it was, you know, probably it had the potential to be good. But this was a great pairing. These are two products that go well together. When, when I was working up this pairing, I was like, well, you know, they'll be good together. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I really honestly felt like it wouldn't be a dud, but that it wouldn't be up near one of my best. And I have to say, these two have been very good together. As I said at the halfway part, more, uh, point, the, the fruit and the caramel, uh, the, the, the kind of a pipe tobacco has really melded together with the coffee and the toast, the spice, the cocoa, the caramel. All of those different things have really worked together very, very well for the A.J. Fernandez New World Navigante and the Glendronic 12-year-old scotch. This is an excellent, excellent 12-year-old scotch for this price point. I cannot say that enough. If you are a person that prefers Speyside and Highland uh, scotches as opposed to the 
the, the deeply smoky and peated like Islay scotches, then this is a scotch for you. It is delicious. It is a single malt that is about 50 bucks. Uh, you know, the, the, the starting point for like Glen Levitt and uh, Glen Morgani with uh, their offerings at, at about 35 or $40 a bottle are a little bit less than this, but this is an excellent scotch and it's relatively unknown. I mean, that's a 12 year old scotch for 50 bucks. It's really good. I would give the AJ Fernandez New World Navigante, I would give it a 90 matchsticks out of 100. I would give the Glendronic 12 year old single malt scotch, I would give it a 92 out of 100 whiskey stones. These are very, very good together. And I had even thought about, well, what if these two are very good individually, but they just don't pair together very well? I'll have to come up with, with something uh, during this video to kind of separate that out and say, hey, they weren't the greatest together, but they're great individually. Oh, no, they're wonderful. You definitely should try these two together. This is a wonderful cigar. That is a wonderful spirit and they go together very, very well. So, I am an extremely happy camper. Now, I look forward to seeing you again next time when I have another great pairing. Uh, be sure to hit like, subscribe, share, notify, all those things, ring, ring all the bells and whistles. Uh, be sure to go by the Sticks and Stone store on Shopify. It is sticks-in-stones, then the number one, dot myshopify.com to get yourself some great, great Sticks and Stones gear like this wonderful embroidered polo shirt that I am wearing, embroidered. You don't ever have to worry about printing fading away and people just thinking you have a regular polo shirt, it will always say sticks and stones on it. Our logo's on it. It is a uh, fast drying material. It's, it's like 105 here today in North Texas and my shirt is as dry as it can be. These are excellent, excellent shirts and they are great to wear to your local cigar shop. People will want to know, hey, what is that sticks and stones thing? And that's a nice shirt. I like that. Go and buy one and try it out. Uh, we have mugs, mouse pads, t-shirts, hats, all different kinds of things for you. Go by the Sticks and Stone store and take a look at us. Be sure to go by and see one of our supporters, Cigarism Accessories uh, on Amazon, Cigarism Understore Accessories. Uh, they have lots of lighters, cutters, uh, just about anything you could want. Uh, humidors, travel humidors. Uh, they are loaded with all kinds of things for the cigar lover, uh, whether it's for you or as a gift. Uh, be sure to be with us next time as I bring you another great pairing. But until we get to see each other again, make sure you keep your sticks dry and your stones cold and have a great day.